the home stretch. This is our last morning aboard Solianus. That's pretty good. Nice job, baby. <laughs> Give me five. Yeah. <laughs> Mama five. High five. We've got the boat mostly cleaned up. The new owner should arrive in... Like an hour or less. Yeah, Half an hour. hour or less. It's been a rush right to the end. <laughs> As it always is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it seems like our whole life. All we've tried to do is slow down and it just never works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're just, we're rushing from one, one attempt to slow down to another. Hmm. But I think the boat looks pretty amazing on the inside, Lauren. You killed it. Thanks. The exterior, a little lackluster, but that's by design. The new owner is gonna leave the boat at the dock for a little while, so we agreed to leave it in storage mode. Yeah, it's definitely bittersweet. It's gonna be tough walking away. But on to bigger and better things. Mm. Big fight. Say bye, boat. Bye. Bye, tartan. Bye, boat. Yeah, that was your first boat. Yeah. All right. You say daddy down. So they say the happiest day of your life is the day you buy your boat and the day you sell your boat, and. Uh, I don't think it's the happiest day, but it's exciting. <laughs> and I think it's made more exciting because we just went and saw another boat that we think has some serious potential. Let's go see the boat. So today could be both days all wrapped into one. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this would be pretty nuts, right? Buying our next boat the same day we sold our first boat? Well, if you watched our last episode, you'd know this. We've, we've actually already been hunting for boats for the past two and a half years. Wait, what now? And we haven't shared a whole lot about it yet. Okay, so what kind of boat have we been hunting for for so long? We've mentioned several times in the past how we've always wanted a multi-hull. Multi-hulls are in our future. Kirk, are you all googly-eyed? I am googly-eyed. <laughs> it's going to be some sort of multi-hulled sailboat. And remember this, in our very first episode on YouTube, we give you a preview of three catamarans we go to great lengths to see. Seeing these boats made us realize a cruising catamaran, even a project boat, wasn't within our reach, which is why we ended up with our Tartan 37. But we've never lost our love for multi-hulls. Throughout the four years we spent cruising on our monohull, we had a lot of time to think about how we wanted to evolve our sailing lifestyle over the next few years, and what kind of boat we'd need to make it happen. Just real quick, quick summary of what's, what's happened. Yeah. And our thought process, because not actually a lot has happened, it's just... Nothing has happened, it's all yeah, in our heads. it's all in our heads. <laughs> it's our thought evolution over the last several years. During Hurricane Irma, we spent a week and a half of our lives. Dorian. During Hurricane Dorian, we spent a week and a half of our lives just like fretting for our boat. We were certain it was lost. Hurricane Dorian, Category 5 storm hitting the Bahamas, heading for the southeast. I can barely keep it together. <laughs> Hurricane Dorian is um, headed right for the east coast of Florida. And it started to dawn on us like, okay, we're going to need to buy a new boat here. We kind of sat down and said, well, like, well, what do we want in a boat? Um, what are our future plans? What are we going to be doing? And like, this was over like a 24 hour period. Yeah, <laughs> we what? were it was a coping mechanism to start thinking about a boat that would replace the one that we were most certainly thought was going to float away and be, Never to be heard of again. Yeah, so um, So we yeah, we just sort of did like a little mental exercise of like what have we learned with our current boat? Like what do we like and what do we don't and and what do we want and one of the most important things to us has been coming up and visiting our family. <laughs> and we foresee that as something that we would like to do even more in the future 
for at least the next couple of years while we have a Very young child. A little baby. Or two. Are you just filming my belly? <laughs> And ultimately we have dreams of one day when our children have grown up a little bit to go sail around the world. Um, but we decided that for our next boat, uh, we wanted something that would allow us to sail more because we have spent a considerable amount of time working on our boat in boat yards. What you doing? We're gonna have some dinner and try not to get eaten alive by the noceums. Living in boatyards away from our family and not sailing. <laughs> this is the very boring, uninspiring part of our journey every year. We're now in the boatyard. There's been a million things that we've been trying to get done before leaving the yard. Almost there. So right now, we've enjoyed six months on, six months off sailing. It's given us an appreciation of both being on land and living on the water. But these in-between times drive me nuts. <laughs> the state of Solianus. Most years we have spent like an entire afternoon polishing all of the metal on the boat and cleaning all the wood interior with wood wax and wood cleaner. It's crazy what the environment does to boats. We're spending you know, lots of money and lots of time to make these transitions, decommissioning the boat after we've been on it for half the year and then we're back in the boat we're back getting the boat ready again after we've been on land for part of the year we just started thinking like why are we spending all of this money to just have the boat be kind of rotting away in florida for part of the year and this is one of the things one of the areas of this lifestyle that we have been living that we really want to improve and meanwhile, we have also been wanting to sail the Great Lakes a bit more because that was part of the reason for buying the boat up there was we wanted to sail around in kind of our home, home area, our home cruising grounds. And there's a ton of beautiful cruising destinations up there. Those two things combined with wanting to have more time on the water, uh, with Lauren being pregnant and us wanting to be closer to family for a little while, made us kind of start to look at other out of the box cruising ideas. We think the best way for us to do this is to no longer leave our boat for six months, but instead take our boat with us. Say that again for the camera. The best way for us to live the lifestyle that we want to now live is to no longer leave our boat behind, <laughs> but to take our boat with us. So what's happening here? Basically, what you've spent your free bits of time doing yeah. the last, what, six months? Maybe like 13 months. <laughs> Watching trimaran videos. I think our next boat is going to be a trailerable trimaran. It got my heart racing though this time watching this video. Oh yeah? Yeah, I was like, all right, that's pretty exciting. Yeah, it's definitely exciting. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, it's a little bit too much excitement for my taste. Yeah, well, we wouldn't necessarily be doing this. Hauling balls. Hauling and balls. <laughs> I was trying to think of when I got like on the kick of trimarans because I used to like be like poo-pooing trimarans. Right, it seemed like they had at least one extra hull. Like, that's just ridiculous, <laughs> right? <laughs> they do have at least one extra hull, <laughs> no matter how you look at it. There ain't no quarter marans out there. Yeah, we're thinking about a trailerable, trailerable, trailerable trimaran. It's a mouthful to say. Yeah, I used to poo-poo on, on trimarans because I was like, oh, they're just more complex and like, they're more costly and like they're so wide and you need like big giant spaces to store them and nobody can haul, haul them out and like all this stuff. And who wants to paint three hulls? Yeah. Come on. We, we knew that we could not handle two boats. We're not buying a boat and leaving it in the Great Lakes and having another boat down in the Bahamas, Florida area. Like that's just ridiculous. This idea, this concept of a trailerable trimaran is not new, but it sort of slapped me in the face and was like, hey, this could address all of the issues that we have had and we are thinking about for the future. And I started thinking like, wait a minute, if we had a trailer bull trimaran, we could just drop the boat in, go sail, haul the boat out, tow it back up north, 
fix whatever we need to fix, clean whatever we need to clean, go see family. Like, Not be paying for a boatyard. Not be paying for a boatyard, and then go sail some more in the Great Lakes. And not worry about our boat being in a hurricane box. Yeah, that was what really set me down this path. Not to mention, we've always wanted to move to a multi-hull eventually. We cut our teeth sailing Hobie Cats and other multi-hulls. Our very first charter was a, a multi-hull. And we want to get more time on the water sailing multi-hulls. Because ultimately, when we sail around the world one day, it's going to be on a multi-hull. Right. Because of my seasickness, because of... A whole host of reasons. <laughs> all the outdoor space and lots of other reasons that we've talked about. So hopefully, there is a trimaran in our very near future. And we could have made this sail and been in for sundowners already. And we could have done it on a nice, wide, flat, stable platform while laying amongst the trampolines. Which we, w we should do more video on sometime. I think we should talk about why we feel like we are more comfortable on multi-hulls and what the pros and cons are. Because I think a lot of people have ideas, um, but until you sit down and sort of investigate for yourself what the ideas, what the reasons are behind your thinking, um, it's just sort of easy to say, oh, multi-hulls are better or monohulls are better. Right, so. yeah. We'll do that video sometime. <laughs> so instead of spending hundreds of dollars a month to keep our boat in storage in Florida and spending two months a year commissioning it and tearing it down the beginning and the end of each cruising season. All of our port lights are covered. Got some more reflectix in our midship hatch. Hopefully we come back and everything is as we left her. Paying to work in a dirty, dusty boat yard. What if we just had a boat that we could work on in our own backyard. Storage was free. I could work on a project and not have to worry about cleaning everything up because we have to go to bed at night. All this just to change the oil. There, there's so many things that my, my mind is just going crazy. Like we could launch the boat ourselves so there's no more paying for a marine travel lift. Mm -hmm. um, you can step the mast right. by yourself so there's no more crane to pay for stepping and unstepping the mast. And it opens up an incredible new range of potential cruising grounds. And that quite possibly is one of the most exciting parts about getting a trailer belt trimaran. Um, while all the rest are much more practical. Practicable. Practical. Having the ability to put the boat on the trailer and go sail uh, the Channel Islands off the coast of California for a month or two, or the San Juan Islands in Washington, or we could decide to take the boat to the Sea of Cortez one winter, or go sail Lake Tahoe, the Bay Area, or the Maritimes up in Canada. A whole ton of unexplored territory for us to go sail and adventure in. <laughs> No. No, we're not offering anything on it today, but... Um, I think we're gonna go back and, and look at it a second time. Okay. Baby running into the street. Yep. We're super excited about the possibility of this happening um, and really looking forward to what our next boat is going to be. The reason we're excited to head north is we are going to the Sarasota Multi-Hull Regatta to check out a couple of trimarans. It's all right, we'll have a, we'll have a little guys day, it's all right. <laughs> One of the hulls out of the water, right? Yeah, it's out of the water. Making sure. We're going sailing. We're on a boat with three hulls. <laughs> are you excited about the boat? <laughs> Basically, we we're trying to get some information about the builder and what to expect if we were going to work with them. We are in the beautiful city of Chicago checking out a Chris White Explorer 44 trimaran. We saw this one go up for sale here in the Great Lakes and unfortunately the only thing that is a problem for us is it doesn't fold. So today, we are in Stewart, Florida to check out this Corsair 37. This is one of the coolest parts. This cabin is great. I love it. This beast is like just barely trailerable. So we're going to look at a Farrier Trimaran this morning. What do you think? I'm in. You're in? 